Okay, we made it on 5.04. I'm so sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. There's always a reason. There's always a reason. There's always technical difficulties. If I had a button that I could just press and it just goes on and everything's fine, I would, I would be on time every single time. Um, and it makes me think about uh, the workshop that I was on time for every day. I'm doing another workshop. That's going to be the end of October. So if you liked the last one, please join me again. And if you're new to the group, what we do during a workshop week is we, I teach you everything. All these, these Wednesday live at fives are little snippets. Oh, Rhonda. Hi. I see you just jumped on. Hi. Thanks for saying hi. I'm going to start with you right away in that question that you asked last week. Thank you so much for the reminder. Thank you everyone for jumping on and saying hi. Hi, May. Hi, Mary. Uh, oh, Sylvana's on. All right. Awesome. Chrissy, how are you doing? I'm so excited for today. I, I feel like every time like I'm writing down my notes for what I'm going to say for the Live at Five, I'm always like, oh, this is such a good one. Um, if we haven't met yet, there's a... Hi, Janice. How are you? Great to see you too. Thank you. Um, if you're new to the group and we haven't met before, I'm Janine Troutman. I started the group because I had healed myself from MS. I was paralyzed in my arms and my legs. And after doctors told me that there was nothing I can do and I was taking the medication, the shots every other day, the beta serone for a year, I just kept getting worse. And it wasn't until my daughter fell in front of me. She was two at the time. She's 15 now. Um, it wasn't until she fell in front of me and there was nothing that I could do to get to her that something snapped inside of me. And right then and there, in that moment, I decided that I was either going to have MS or I was going to be a mother. I couldn't do both. And everything changed from that point on. Everything changed. And it wasn't overnight. It took many years. And that's why... I put this group together because I don't want you guys spending many years trying to figure out how to heal and what's going on with your body. So during those workshop weeks, I grab all of this information and I put it in one week for you guys. And then I open the enrollment to my coaching program. This way, if you want to take it to the next level and have an entire group of people who are all doing the same thing, all healing, all going through the same protocol, it's a really great community feeling. Open enrollment will happen with each workshop. Workshop. So the next one is the last week in October, and then enrollment will be open through the first week in November. Okay, so first, before we begin, um, thank you for jumping on and saying hi, Daniela. Thank you so much. Hi, how are you? I am going to start with Rhonda Dodson and to say thank you so much. Hi, Blanca, how are you? Thank you so much to Rhonda because last week I was supposed to talk about taking breaks from detoxing and why it was so important to accelerate your healing. And you know me, I start talking and then I branch off and I branch off and all of a sudden, you know, we're done with the talk and I, I forgot to talk about what I wanted to talk about. So Rhonda reminded me. Thank you very much. Hi, Patty from Chicago. How are you doing? Keisha, hi, how are you? Um, I'm so glad to see all of you guys on. I love our group. I don't know about you, but the MS groups that I have visited in the past, they had a very um, negative air about them. And I felt like it was really sad to go in there because I really didn't get a good feeling once I was in there. And I feel like this group that we have, this little community inside Minding Your Soul, everybody is so helpful and positive and we're doing this and we're doing that. And hey, listen, did you have a bad day? Let us like take you up a, a couple notches, right? We're all each other's cheerleaders. And I feel like in this day and age, we don't have, we don't have a village. We don't have a community. And I feel like that's what we were created to thrive in, the, the village, the community. So I feel like every time I go into Minding Your Soul, the group, I, I get that community feeling. I'm like, oh, these are my, my people. Like everyone is just so positive and helpful. And I just wanted to say thank you guys. We're really attracting um, a nice tribe. We're creating a really good tribe. And I, I just thoroughly appreciate all of the different personalities in the group and and I love it. And I just want to say thank you. And Chrissy says, I love this group too, right? Jan is my tribe. Yeah. You really do feel empowered and motivated, especially when you're taking on something like healing MS. You need to see evidence. You need to see that it's been done before. So that's why in this group, I come in here every Wednesday and let you know, here are the steps to take. Here's one big step. So we chunk it down. We take it in baby steps. And not only am I the evidence, but all the people in the group who are seeing results since the last workshop we did. Um, it's only been probably two months since we did the last one. And and people are already within the first couple of weeks 
feeling the effects of what those changes that I suggested in the workshop um, they do. They're already feeling the changes. So it's just such a great feeling and I absolutely love this. So, oh, I, I love all the, I love all the love. It's wonderful. All right. So today we're talking about detoxing and Rhonda, thank you for reminding me. I'm going to go through it right now. So why is it important to, for, we're going to go through all the different ways that you can detox, what detoxing means and different detoxes that you can do. Before I get into all of those, I want to let you know that when you go into a, any detox, <clears throat> still fighting the sore throat, hold on. When you go into any detox, it is very important to not try to be a badass and power through. I don't know about you, but my personality is always like all or nothing, right? I'm like, got to do it, got to do it, got to do it. And then I end up exhausting myself. And then I'm even lower than I was before. And then it takes me even longer to build myself back up. Or at least that's how it was for years for me. I really had to learn how to not power through because that's how, that's not how my body, that's not how most bodies really respond or thrive in. We want to be kind to ourselves, just like we would be kind to our children or our, any loved one, our spouses. You don't power through. So when you're starting any detox, let's say that your baseline level of health is here. Now, when you start a detox, it's, it's exhausting for your body to release all of those toxins. It takes a lot out of you. So you're going to find that your energy level starts going down. Now, it's hard for people um, who don't know, who go into this blind, to know, to understand that as your energy level goes down, this is actually a really good thing. It means that the detox is working. You're getting those toxins out. But what happens is you kind of get scared and you're like, am I doing the right thing? Yeah, you're doing the right thing. Some people want to power through. Some people want to stop. I always recommend going down to the level where you're like, all right, I'm good. I don't need to get any more tired than this. I feel like crap. I need to return to my health. So then you stop doing your detox and your health and your energy slowly starts coming back a couple days, maybe a week. Well, what happens is when you come back, you come back to a higher baseline than when you started. So now your level of energy, your level of health is here. Then you start again and you start declining again and you go, oh, okay, that's it. I don't want to be any more tired than this. You stop. And then you take a couple of days, maybe a week to come back up to baseline. And now your baseline is even higher than it was before. So I'm the visual learner, of course. So I like to see it this way. You're constantly up leveling, leveling up. Is that what they say? Leveling up your baseline energy level. Now, this, another analogy is you're going to hit a peak, right? You're at your, your, your baseline health, and then you're going to dip into a little bit of a valley while you're detoxing. Then you're going to stop. Only you can decide when to stop. I can't say, oh, it's been three days. It's been a week. Make sure you stop. No, only you can decide how you feel and if you need to stop. And when you get to the point where you're like, wow, this is a lot of symptoms, stop. And then let your body return. When it returns, that peak is going to be even higher than it was when you started. And that's how healing goes. It's not linear. It actually goes in peaks and valleys. And the more time you give yourself to heal, the faster you'll be able to do another detox, right? Yes, you're going to go back down into another valley, but that valley won't be as low. And when you give yourself the break and you allow yourself to return to health, that peak is going to be even higher. So you have this, like say graph of peaks and valleys that go like this. If you were to chart all the points of the peaks right here, here, and here, and draw a line through those, those points, the line would be going straight up or at least diagonal up. It would be going up, but you know, that it's the peaks and the valleys that you have to go through. So you'll see if you've been um, paying attention, like in the group to the people who are healing, they're going to come out with, oh my God, I had a great week. I feel so good. And then they're going to be like, oh, you know what? I don't know what happened to my energy. It's gone this week. And then it comes back because healing isn't linear. You have to know when to take breaks. You have to know when to stop and let your body heal. Okay. Because now we're going to get into talking about toxins. When you're detoxing, your body uses a lot of energy to get those toxins out. Now, what are we talking about when we talk about toxins? Toxins is a very general, broad term. You could be talking about 
bacteria, viruses, and, and fungi. It could be talking about heavy metals. Maybe you want to detox the heavy metals out of your body. Maybe you want to detox the dead cells and the free radicals out of your body. Maybe you want to do all of the above and do a very powerful liver cleanse. So first you want to decide what you want to do, what you want to clean out. And when we're talking about MS, we want to make sure that the body is operating optimally. How does the body operate optimally? Well, it does so by not having interference. The interference comes from the toxins, the pathogens, the viruses, the bacteria. Our overall goal in whether you have MS or not, whether you're, even if you're just any old human, you want to always be detoxing your body because we're constantly bringing stuff in. We're constantly bringing pathogens in and our liver can only do so much before it becomes overloaded. And if you're anywhere over 30 years old, your liver is very sluggish. When they tell us, oh, it's normal, you know, you go to the doctor and they say, oh, well, it's normal for you to gain a gain, uh, pound or two every year and just keep it on. No, it's not. What happens is your liver at the age of 35, about 35, 40, it gets so bogged down with all the crap that you have been accumulating your entire life that it can't process. It can't get rid of the toxins anymore. So you have all these toxins floating around your body. What does your body do to protect itself from the toxins? If your liver can't get them out quick enough, you can't have all these toxins floating around your body. So what your body does is it wraps it in a fat cell because that's the safest thing for it to do. And then where does it put it? It puts it in storage. And where is storage on a woman? On her ass and on her thighs. Where is it on a man? In his belly, on his gut. So that's why we keep accumulating this weight the older we get. They say it has to do with hormones. They say it has to do with just, oh, it's just normal getting older. No, it's not. If you had a cleaned out liver, you wouldn't gain the weight because your liver would be doing what it did the rest. Of Remember when you were younger and you were like, all I had to do is think about losing weight and maybe not drink my three cans of soda a week and I would drop pounds like that. That's because your liver was so damn efficient back then. It's not so efficient anymore, but you can get it back. There's always ways to get it back. So Again, whether you have MS or you're just a human, you always got to be cleaning out your liver. When we have MS, we're always dealing, um, we're always trying to clean out our body of the virus that causes MS. So we always want to be starving the virus, killing the virus with our immune system, and then detoxing it out. So one of the ways to start with detoxing, and it is very powerful, we've seen the effects in the group already, is the lemon water in the morning and the celery juice. That is a very powerful detox that you're doing every single day. And the reason is because you're helping your liver clean out more crap than it could do by itself. Your liver's job it, well, one of its jobs is to clean out the crap from your body. So what it does in order to do this job efficiently is it wakes up before you do. Around three o'clock in the morning um, is like usual for most people's schedules while you're still sleeping so it can get the job done before you wake up and start eating. Because once you eat something and you start the digestion process, you've stopped the detoxing process. So, ooh, there's a lot of lemon in there. You gotta go easy on that next time. Um, so what you want to do is first thing in the morning, you want to drink your 16 ounces of lemon water. It's just a half a lemon squeezed in water. And you want to get those 16 ounces of water in there first thing in the morning. So you are flushing out the toxins that your liver has worked so hard to pull out while you were sleeping. Because if you don't do that, your liver has to now work to reabsorb all of those toxins. And then it starts over the next day, right? It reabsorbed it the next day, wakes up three o'clock in the morning and starts pulling them out again. If you drink those 16 ounces of water, you're flushing them out again, or flushing out so many more toxins than your liver can do by yourself. And that's why your morning pee is so dark because those are all the toxins that your body has, your liver has pulled out during the night. So the celery, um, the lemon water, first thing in the morning, 20 minutes later, you follow it up with the celery juice. The celery juice is a very powerful killer of the Epstein-Barr virus. All viruses, really, all viruses. Well, my husband had COVID uh, a couple weeks ago. I was on, so, being pregnant, I was on celery juice twice a day, every day. He was on it twice a day, every day. He recovered quickly, he recovered nicely. And now my daughter being diagnosed with mono, like what happened in September? I had COVID. Like really, you're only pregnant for nine months, right? Any other given nine months out of the year, nothing's going on in this household. 
The first four months that I'm pregnant, we get COVID, we get mono, and I'm not even going to ask the universe what is next because the universe will usually answer. Um, but anyway, so I used celery juice. It was a very powerful cleanser of my liver. And because it kills pathogens on contact, I knew that I was going to be safe and I didn't get any symptoms of COVID. I didn't get any symptoms of mono. The throat, I still have. This is this is something that's been lingering. I don't know if it's because I'm talking too much or what, but I, I have had a sore throat most of this month. So anyway, that's going to be, that's what I call your daily detox, your lemon water and your celery juice in the morning. And that is something that you can do every single day that is easy and is super powerful to helping your body clean out the viruses. Another way that you can detox your body is detoxing from the heavy metals. Heavy metals are what feed the Epstein-Barr virus. You, and most viruses, viruses feed on heavy metals. So even if you are gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, that's great. But the, the viruses still have another food source, and that is heavy metals. Okay, Bella, I see that I just got a message that you want to join my um, live video, which is super freaking awesome. I've oh, I'm always waiting for someone to want to join my video and ask me questions. But every time I, I do this and I, I say out loud that I can see your notification, people always message me and they're like, oh, no, I hit that button by mistake. Please don't add me. So I'm going to wait for you. Send me a message, comment, and let me know if you really want to be a part of this live video because I would absolutely love to have you on if you have a question or if you just want to comment. I've never done it before, so I, I'd absolutely love to do it with you. Let me know. Send me a message. And while I'm reading the comments here, Jenna says, can we detox mold with a heavy metal detox smoothie? You know what? I don't know. I would have to research that. Um, I really don't know if we can detox mold. I think that's going to be more from the celery juice, just based on what the medical medium has said about the fungus and the molds in our body. I don't know about the, um, the mold with the heavy metal detox smoothie. Bella, Bella says, sorry, accident. That's okay. So many people do that, and I get super excited. Um, just so anybody knows, if you do want to join this live video, apparently there's a way to do it. There's a button on your end that you hit, and then I can hit accept on my end, and then you, I guess, like pop in with a little, little square of your face and then you and I can talk back and forth with questions. So if you do have questions about the detox and you want to be part of this video, I'm really excited to do that with somebody. Um, so you just let me know if you want to do it and we'll do it. But I'm glad I confirmed because don't worry about it. A lot of people do that. So the heavy metal detox smoothie is from the medical medium and that is something in the form of a smoothie. It's five different ingredients that you put together in a smoothie and you what happens is it works as a football team. Each ingredient of that smoothie works in tandem with each other. So let's say there's barley grass juice powder in that smoothie. There's spirulina. There's Atlantic Dulce, which is like a type of seaweed. There's cilantro. And everything works together so that one will pick up let's say a heavy metal, let's say lead in your brain, one will pick that up and start carrying it through your body, right? So that through the one of the excretory systems, usually your lymphatic system, and it will carry it, but can, it can only carry it so far. So then where, what did I say? Like say the barley grass, pick that up. Maybe the Atlantic Dulce will take it the rest of the way. And then maybe the spirulina will take it all the way out. Maybe the cilantro is grabbing the mercury while the barley grass juice over here is grabbing the, um, I don't know, cadmium. So they all work together like a football team. I don't know anything about football, but all I do know, all I know is that when the team has to work to get the ball from one end to the other end, and they all work together to do that. And that's what the heavy metal detox smoothie does. Um, I drink it every day and it's part of my four month protocol, my path to healing protocol, because it is so important to, oh, wild blueberries. Thank you, Janice. I, the big one, wild blueberries. That's another one that is so powerful and they have to be wild. They can't just be convenient conventional blueberries. And that is something that you can do easily for your body every single day. Um, I do it because we can't stay away from toxins like heavy metals in our environment. It's impossible. They're everywhere. They're in our foods. They're in our cookware. They're, heavy metals are everywhere. They're falling out of the sky in the chemtrails. So it's okay that we are bombarded with chemicals and pesticides and crap that our liver has to clean out every day. It's okay. We have a liver. We have a pancreas, not a pancreas, um, kidneys. We have 
we have um, organs in our bodies that are prepared to deal with the onslaught of toxins that we get from just living in this environment, living on earth. But what happens is if we don't take the steps, if we don't eat the right foods to detox our bodies on a regular basis, what happens is we become clogged and overloaded and then we can't do what we were designed to do. Our liver can't function the way it was designed to function. That's the reason why we detox. We probably didn't need to do this 100 years ago because all of our food had everything that we needed and we ate all of these amazing foods that were so nutrient rich. Today, they're not as nutrient rich. Yes, of course, they still have nutrients in them, but there was a study done, uh, I think UCLA, and I don't remember the exact years because I don't have my notes up. That's usually when I'm, I'm doing a, a different live that those notes are up. I can read the study to you. But basically what it's saying is 50 years ago, one bowl of spinach, it would require us to eat something like 30 bowls of spinach today to get the same nutrients and mineral content that was found in one bowl of spinach 50 years ago. So we can't, it's not possible for us to get the level of nutrients in our body from food alone. So what do we do? We supplement and we also clean out our bodies regularly, right? And we make sure that we eat our foods, um, our antioxidants, our fruits and vegetables. That's going to lead me to the next uh, detox that I like to talk about. When we clean out the liver, where are we doing? This is the heavy metal. Okay, the nine day cleanse is a great liver detox, detox. And if you're not familiar with that, the medical medium puts out a book, Cleanse to Heal. This is now, this comes free. This comes with every client that I have who does the Cleanse to Heal program. It's a four month program. They all get this book for free because it is their, it is a Bible. It is my Bible. I refer to this all the time. It's got great recipes in it, but it really has tons and tons of cleanses in it. And the one that is the most important that we do during the four months is the 369, the Simplified 369 Cleanse. And it's just a general um, eating healthy, eating all antioxidants. And there's certain ones that you eat for three days. And then there's other ones that you eat for the following three days. And then the last three days, you are pure, um, pureeing all of those foods. It's, it's all liquid. And you're cleaning out your liver in such a way that it's never been cleaned out before. You're revitalizing your body and it's just a jump start. It cleans out everything, the fungus, the bacteria, the um, viruses, the candida, all the crap that's in your system, it cleans you out and you're not starving. You don't have to starve. When people hear detox, they think, oh my goodness, I'm going to starve. No, you don't have to. What you have to do is know what you're putting in your body and how it's working for your body. And that's where these cleanses come in. So you can do a nine day cleanse, which I've done in the past. It's a lot, it is a lot. You eat and it's not the food that's the problem. Symptoms of detoxing are very powerful and it's not just physical, it's emotional. When you detox, you think that you're just bringing up all the crap that I just mentioned, right? The viruses, the bacteria, the fungus. Yeah, those are coming up, but you know what else is coming up? All of your baggage, all of the stuff that you have packed down for years, that you've become very good at packing down. When you're detoxing, all of your walls, all of your defenses are broken down and all of that crap comes up to deal with. And it's, uh, excuse my language, but it's an emotional shitstorm. As long as you're prepared for that, as long as somebody tells you that it's an emotional shitstorm, it's so much easier to deal with because then as it's happening, you're going, oh, this is what Janine said was going to happen to me. And you just let it up and you just let it go. It's, or I should say it's easier to let it go. If you don't know that it's happening, then you're like, what is this? What's going on? Am I going crazy? All am I doing is a deep. So it, it's nice to know that that's going to happen. And that is a very powerful cleanse, that nine day cleanse in, in so, on so many different levels. Now, another cleanse that I wanted to tell you about is one that I did after I healed. So I was about, I would say 75 to 80% healed before I found the medical medium. He released his first book, not this one, this is like a few books later. His first book, which was just titled Medical Medium, uh, came out in 2015. 
by that time, I had healed most of my symptoms. And the symptoms that were lingering, I was I was happy to live with. Whatever, numb toes, I don't need the toes. <laughs> numb patches all over my body, that's fine. I wasn't getting dizzy till 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I still had the whole morning part of my day. And the brain fog would come and go, right? But mostly, I was functioning. I was good. Once I found the medical medium, he's the one who really allowed me to hone in on what the problem was and uh, tackle those final symptoms and heal up until 100%. So after I was healed 100%, that's when I was introduced to fasting. Fasting is fascinating. Uh, it's amazing what that does. I had no idea. You, they mention fasting so many times in the Bible, and y you do every time I talk about any kind of detox, fasting or any kind of detox, we always talk about, like I just said, not only do the pathogens come up and out of your body, but so does the emotional baggage that you've been holding on to also comes up and out. So for me, detoxing and fasting is very spiritual. It's healing on so many different levels. Fasting is very hard on the body, though. So I fast for two days every three months. I take two days out and I really like the product from um, Isogenics called Cleanse to Life. I don't sell it, but if you know someone who does, they can explain the whole thing to you. I do that juice four times a day, um, four times a day around, not around the clock, but four ounces, four times a day for two days. I don't eat any food. Now, that is something to do when you are ready to bring your health to the next level because what happens during a fast is something called autophagy. And I did bring this up because I really did want to read this to you and then explain in my own words what it means. But the actual definition is autophagy is a natural cellular mechanic mechanism by which cells in our body degrade unnecessary or damaged components within the cell. The process of autophagy helps maintain normal functioning homeostasis in that cell. The term autophagy literally means self-eating. Now that sounds awful, right? That's what they say next. Though autophagy sounds like self-destruction, the process actually helps clean up harmful material inside the body and rejuvenates it. So in my own words, what that means to me all the reading that I have done. When, remember when I talk about free radicals and how antioxidants are able to calm the free radical by giving it the missing electron that it needs to become stable. So that's a process in your body that's happening all the time. So you eat your antioxidants, your antioxidants are those superheroes who can give those electrons and not become unstable themselves. Well, that's a great process for your body to do on a regular basis because autophagy isn't always activated. That is only activated through a two-day cleanse. And what happens is your body goes, holy shit, we don't have any food. We need to survive. All right, everyone, we're going into survival mode. And what happens is it goes, you, free radical, you're out of here. And it cleans it right out. It cleans out all the dead tissue inside your body. It cleans out all the free, not, not all of them, but a good amount of free radicals out of your body and because your body's in oh shit mode, right? So it's like, we don't need you. We don't need you. All right, everybody, we are in survival mode. Get the crap out. And it is very um, hard on the body. It is hard to do a two day, at least it is for me, a two day fast. Um, but it's so powerful. It kills the candida very quickly. It starves the hell out of it and flushes it out because you're drinking crazy amounts of lemon water all day long. You're flushing everything out. And by the end of those two days, on that third day, you wake up and you notice that, I notice that things on my body have healed. You know, things that, that my skin looks amazing. And if you can see all of these changes on the outside within just two days, can you imagine what's happening on the inside? The biggest thing for me is that it gets rid of all of my cravings. I know that the candida, which candida is just another word for yeast, by the way. When they say, oh, you have a candida overgrowth, they make it sound so dramatic. Candida is the name of the yeast that's inside your body. So when they say you have a candida condition, it just means that you have yeast inside your body and everybody has yeast inside their body. So you know when you're making um, pizza dough, if you've ever made any kind of dough from scratch, you put the yeast the packet in the warm water and then you sprinkle the sugar on top, right? Why? Because it feeds the yeast and then the yeast gets all frothy because it's eating and then that's what you add to your flour and that's what makes it rise. The same thing happens in your body. The more sugar you eat, the more yeast you feed, 
the yeast becomes very strong and now starts dictating how you eat because your, your clue is going to be after you're done with a big meal, you are, do you crave sugar after a big meal? That means you got a little candida issue going on and you need to do a cleanse of some sort to kill that candida because once I'm done with those two day fasts, which I do like every three, four months, not while I'm pregnant though, I haven't done one while I'm pregnant and I won't. Um, you don't get any cravings. After dinner, you don't even want anything sweet. It's amazing the difference. So I do that every three or four months. Rhonda asks or says, so you get very lightheaded when you do that two day fast? No, I don't get lightheaded. And I'm not starving, not on the second day. I'm trying to think of like what the feeling is. So the first day around three o'clock in the afternoon, you're like, oh my goodness, I am hungry. But you know what really fills your stomach and makes you drink over a gallon of water is that lemon water. Not just regular water, it's the lemon water that really fills you up. The second day you actually get crazy energy because the first day you burn through all your glycogen. Glycogen is your stored glucose, the stored sugars. So you're burning through all your sugar reserves. On the second day, you are running on liquefied fat, okay? So your body goes into survival mode and goes, oh no, we don't have anything to run on. Hit the storage. We need the storage facilities to open up. And that's when you're burning that liquefied fat. And that's why so many toxins are released. Because remember when I told you earlier, when your body um, wants to protect itself from a toxin, what does it do? If it can't use the excretory systems to get it out, toxins don't take that route well, your body goes all right shit what do we do next best thing is to wrap it in a fat cell to protect it and then throw it in storage where it can't hurt anybody so it's it's suffocated inside of this fat cell and then it's stored and where you know where we store our fat women anyway is in our in our ass and in our thighs so that's why a fast really tackles, yes, the fat, the stored fat, but it tackles all of those toxins that are stored in the fat. Now, one of my clients asked me, does she think that, do I think that the Epstein-Barr virus is stored in our fat cells? And I can't, I can't prove this. I don't know. And no medical anything is going to tell you online whether or not that's true. But every time I do a fast, wherever there is stored fat, like in the back of the arm right here, I will break out. That those are the toxins coming out. Is it the Epstein-Barr virus? I don't know. Um, I don't know. But I do know that all of those toxins come out through your skin. So if you are doing the lemon water, the celery juice, heavy metal smoothie, fasting, whatever, and you notice breakouts, which I've heard people in the group comment on, that's because your skin is your largest organ and your lymphatic system, which your body uses to get rid of toxins, it's right underneath your lymphatic um uh, pathways are right underneath your skin. So when you're releasing, your skin is releasing. And that is what bringing me, this is really flowing along nicely, this live at five. <laughs> That's what's going to bring me to the last, the fifth uh, detox method. It's going to seem crazy, crazy simple. Uh, can you drink bone broth on a fast? No, Patty, you can't. Great question. Because um, did I finish answering Rhonda? Did I tell you so on the second day you're burning, uh, you're, you're going on stored um, fat. So you're, you're running, your energy is liquefied fat, which feels amazing. On day two, it's the weirdest thing, how amazing you feel and how much energy you feel. Because you're like, I haven't eaten in two days. How is this even possible? But um, you do. You feel really amazing. So no, I never got lightheaded before. There were a few times in the beginning um, where if I moved too fast, like it would take me a second for things to catch up, but that doesn't happen to me anymore. But again, I've been doing this for years and years, so everyone is different. So I can't say, you know, it's not going to happen to you. So anyway, I just wanted to finish Rhonda's uh, question. Patty, can you drink bone broth? No, you can't. Uh, and honestly, I forget the reason why. <laughs> it has something to do with the collagen and the fat and activating the digestive process. I think that's what it was. But no, you can't drink bone broth. Um, yeah, you have to look that up or I'll look that up and I'll tell you about it. I forget the reason why. I think that's the reason why you cannot activate any of your digestive processes because then that stops the detoxing and then it just becomes um, a calorie restriction and a calorie restriction is very different from a, um, a fast because in a calorie restriction, you're shrinking the fat cell around the toxin. You're not actually 
burning up that fat so that the toxin can get released out of your body. And, and you never want to do that. So you want to do a true fast. Now, again, guys, if you have terrible, uh, if you have symptoms of MS, deal with those first. Don't do the fast right away. The fast is for the people in the group who have healed, let's say 75, 80% of the way, and they just have those lingering symptoms that aren't really affecting their lives. That's who a fast is for. A fast is not for somebody who has any kind of issues with their symptoms, holding them back from what they want to do on a daily basis. I, I just want to make that clear. I don't want you guys to do a fast and then be like, well, Janine said, no, a fast is very, very aggressive on the body. It takes a lot of energy out. And in the beginning, I started with a one day fast. I wouldn't even, I worked my way up to a two day fast. So I don't want you to think that a fast is something to jump into. It's not. I don't even do it with my clients on my four month program. Um, I offer that later on. If you want to do a fast after you've already healed, if you want to do a fast, I will walk you through it. And I've walked people through that. Um, but only later on down the healing road. I know that was a lot of um, disclaimer in there. Um, Rhonda just wants to know if you get dizzy. No, no, you definitely don't get dizzy. Jenna says, do you still take your supplements during your two-day fast? No, no, not at all. I don't take any supplements during my two-day fast. I just drink the lemon water and that cleanse for life. I think it's called cleanse for life from that, from that isogenics company. That's the only thing that I take. Now, if you talk to an isogenics rep, they're going to tell you that you can have other things like there are other things that you can have during the fast. I don't agree with that. So it really just depends on who you talk to and what their belief system is. I want, I don't want any digestion. I don't want to keep my calories under 20. I want a full true fast. That's why I don't chew anything. I don't swallow any supplements. So I think what I was going for before was the fifth uh, detox method, which is a very simple one. It's exercise. And I know it seems very simple, but when you exercise, it's about sweating. It's about really contracting that muscle and sweating because our sweat is what is going to release the toxins from our skin. Our skin has absorb the toxins that our lymphatic system is releasing and it gets stuck. They get stuck in our skin. And when we sweat, it washes it all away. It, it, it really helps to get that lymphatic fluid moving because our lymphatic fluid doesn't have a pump the way our blood does. Our blood is pumped by our heart. Our lymphatic system has no pump. You know what the pump is? Our own movement. So in order to get the toxins that are floating through your lymphatic system moving out quicker, we have to be moving, right? So we have to be exercising and sweating. And I have a little note here because I didn't want to forget this part. Um, when you sweat, you know that we're releasing a, a, an incredible amount of toxins. So that, I just want to touch on the deodorant issue. If you are using regular deodorant, let me know who's using um, regular, who's using a, um, an all natural deodorant, because it's so important. What happens when you use a conventional deodorant that has the aluminum in it? They're called antiperspirants. They prevent you from perspiring in the armpits, right? So it's blocking all of those pores so that you can't perspire. When you block these pores, what do you think happens to all of those toxins that go, oh, I know a good exit. Yeah, make sure you take the exit. Everyone's going towards that exit. This is the exit. All of your toxins are coming out through your armpits. They're supposed to be, right? So when you, when you clog that up with aluminum, with deodorants, where your toxins are like the door's locked, the door's closed. Now what do we do? Oh my God, there is an influx of toxins. And where do they go? Where do they go? They go right here. This is where they all um, gather up and get gunked up. And that's why breast cancer is so big. I had no idea that doctors knew this because they don't tell us this. I had a very close friend of mine and also a coworker who went through breast cancer. And as soon as they were done, as soon as they recovered and they were done with the chemotherapy, you know what their doctor said to them? Now make sure that you don't ever use regular deodorant again. Make sure you only use an all natural. My friend's like, what the, f excuse my language. What the fuck? Why didn't you tell me this before? Why didn't anyone tell me this before? What do you mean don't use deodorant? What do you mean that causes toxins? Nobody tells you that. They just sell deodorant like it's nothing. Like, oh yeah, rub this on. You won't sweat, you won't smell. You need to sweat there. 
So when I met my husband, Tom's of Maine, perfect, Silvana, Tom's of Maine, that's a really good one. Um, Chrissy, you use Tom's too. Okay, perfect. Um, I think most of us in this group know this, and I know it's a hard topic to talk about with, you know, your, your friends or your family, but we really do need to pass this information on because it's not being told. People are going through chemotherapy, and then they're being told, oh, yeah, by the way, don't use deodorant again. So... Janice, yeah, okay, good. Yikes, she said, I use secret. Don't use secret, unless they make an all natural kind. You don't want to be blocking that up because that's the biggest cause of breast cancer. So that's what I was going to say. So I, when I met my husband, I'm like, listen, I don't wear deodorant because I forgot how it came up or something. I think I stayed over his house one time and um, I wasn't planning on it. So he goes, well, you can use my stuff. I have an extra toothbrush and if you want, you can use my deodorant. And I thought this was a good time to tell him. I'm like, oh, I don't use deodorant. He goes, what? I go, yeah, I don't use deodorant. He goes, that's odd. I, I've never, I never smelled you. You know, don't smell bad. And I go, no, I don't. You know, you let the toxins out on a regular basis. You don't smell bad. Now, right before my period when my hormones are insane, yeah, I do. I do smell bad. But not very long. What I do is I just go in there with some peroxide, like a cotton round with some peroxide and I just clean it off because that smell is just the bacteria pooping. That's all it is. Your bacteria the, that gets released, those toxins, it's bacteria and it poops and that poop stinks. So you just got to clean it off a little bit. You don't need the deodorant. So anyway, my husband goes, he goes, that's insane. He goes, what about when you exercise? I'm like, yeah, no, I don't use it either. I don't need to. I don't smell. So I said, why don't you try it? Why don't you just try it and see what happens? He's like, no, I would stink. I'm like, all right, well, if you stink, go back to the deodorant, but at least you'll know. Just try it. So he did. That was three years ago. He hasn't worn deodorant since. He's shocked. He was absolutely shocked that he didn't smell. He's been working out with the same guy for, I don't know, a decade, right? So he actually warned his friend Ross and he goes, listen, I stopped wearing deodorant. You got to tell me if you smell me, buddy. All right. And he's like, he, he never smelled. He goes, Janine, I, I just thought, I said, yeah, I know. That's what we, they don't tell us these things. So I just wanted to touch on that to make sure you guys knew you don't have to wear deodorant. You might smell for the first couple days as that is getting out and all that backup is coming out. But again, just go in the bathroom. Keep your, I think everyone has like peroxide in their bathroom, right? Use a little cotton round and, and take that off. Um, I do have an all natural deodorant that I feel like I need for backup. But every time I use it, I hate the feeling of the stickiness. I don't like it. And they feel like I smell weird. So I, I don't use it at all. So if that helps anybody, I hope it does. Um, cause it's very important to keep our, keep our toxins out of our body and keep them flowing out. May says no deodorant for me eating the right foods, teenage years, secret use. Yeah, of course. In my teenage years, I use secret too. Um, actually I think I use teen spirit. That was a big one. Teen spirit. Um, uh, yeah. So my kids, my husband, we're all off the deodorant and we don't stink. We're not a stinky family. All right, guys. I think that's everything that I wanted to say about, um, detoxing. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. Okay. I did finish everything. Did I first? Okay. Yeah. I finished everything, but I just had a couple of reminders, uh, and things that I wanted to mention. If you have another minute, there was a, um, member of the group of the minding your soul group that said, I have swollen nymph, uh, lymph nodes. Do you think it's a symptom of detoxing? And with all the clients that I've worked with, with the detoxing, I've never dealt with swollen lymph nodes. Now it's interesting that two people in the group have said this. And it's also interesting that, um, or she said, yay, Rhonda. Oh, okay. That was up a little bit further. Okay, perfect. Um, it's also interesting that my daughter started with the swollen lymph nodes before she got sick. And so many people that I'm talking to around school or around town, they're dealing with swollen lymph nodes. So something is going around. I want you to know that symptoms of detox, yes, they're strong. Yes, they're exhausting, but it's not going to be anything new. Symptoms of detox are kind of symptoms like we're, that we're used to dealing with. Um, exhaustion, like the fatigue, um, maybe a little lightheadedness, and maybe a little um, um, sluggishness, tingling. The tingling sometimes gets worse. Maybe the numbness gets worse. 
but there are symptoms that we're used to that get worse. They're not like new, like out of the blue. Oh my God, my lymph, lymph nodes are swollen. So that's something else. That is probably a pathogen that got into your body that your body is trying to get rid of, but your lymph nodes now are swollen because your lymphatic system isn't moving. So a lot of lemon water, a lot of movement. And of course, I always go right to the oregano oil because I use that instead of the um, antibiotic. I always use high levels of oregano oil. And no, I'm not going to tell you how much I use because I don't want to recommend it because I use a lot. Um, you got to decide that on your own. I can't tell you. I can't prescribe anything. Um, Silvana, I had swollen lymph nodes a month before MS was diagnosed. See, that's what happened with my daughter. She got the swollen lymph nodes um, a couple weeks before mono was diagnosed. So I don't remember exactly what was going on with me before I got mono, but I do know that I always dealt with strep throat. Strep throat is cofactor of the Epstein-Barr virus. So of course, everything here, all the lymph nodes are going to be swollen. But I don't want you to think that it's a symptom of detoxing. It's, it's a pathogen. It's a virus that got in and your body is having a hard time getting it out and you need to help it. <laughs> Janice, you're so right. Janice says the best part of detox is more frequent poop emojis. Yeah, aren't they great? Um, especially with the celery juice. The celery juice doesn't work as well for me now that I'm pregnant. I used to love my, sorry guys, but we got to talk about it. My soft, regular poops. They would come out every day and they'd come out beautiful. They'd come out honestly beautiful. All one piece, light brown. You really do want those. And now that I'm pregnant, it's just... I'm lucky if I get a good poop like that. I still go every day, but it's it's rocks. Um, not hard rocks, but it's pieces. So even the celery juice isn't isn't doing it for me. So Janice, fabulous. Um, oh, another thing that I want to say. Um, I'm not sure what Facebook is doing now because this was the first event that I scheduled and I was putting all the details in like I normally do. And then all of a sudden it created a group. It created a group of all the people who said that they were going to the class and they're now all in a Facebook messenger group. I didn't create that group, just so you know. Um, Facebook did that by itself. I don't know if that's an option that I checked off or not, but I didn't want anyone to be confused about that. I'll be in there when I can. I couldn't these last couple days, um, but I will be in there when I can. So if you like the group, great. If you don't like the group, I think you can... Um, remove yourself from it. But I, I just want to let you know, give me some feedback on that in the group or in the minding your soul and just let me know if that's something you want to keep or if I should look to maybe not create the group every time I do an event like this. Cause it might get annoying on your phone. Like when your phone is dinging nonstop. Um, oh, you know what else I wanted to say? Keisha, if you're still here, I loved what you said. You said about, um, we were talking about antioxidants and getting more antioxidants in your body. And she's like, you know, you can only eat so many salads. I love the ideas that people are giving in the group. And I wanted to give you guys another resource to use because yeah, it's really hard. You don't want to eat salads all the time. They get boring. The vegetarians, they have a really good handle on how to make vegetables taste good and turn them into meals. So I always look up vegetarian lunches, vegetarian dinners, um, vegetarian snacks. I don't make them vegetarian all the time. I do for my daughter, but a lot of times I'll add the chicken, I'll add the meat for it, me and my husband, and I'll just tweak that recipe. But they give, oh, Keisha, you are still on. All right, very good. Yeah, I feel the same way. You, you can't live on salads. You know, you have to really enjoy your food. So Google vegetarian recipes. They're going to give you some really cool ideas on how to make vegetables taste good and what to do with them. Because I feel like there are things that I would have never thought about. And it all comes from vegetarian cookbooks, Googling the recipes, and then I just tweak them to add the chicken, to add the meat, add the, with the fish or whatever you want to add. And that's a huge resource for me. Okay. So the last thing, <coughs> where's my memo? This month, October, is a really great month. I know I, I, I do say this all the time, but this one's pretty exciting. Um, we have an MS, again, for everyone who's new and, and doesn't, isn't familiar with this, I had asked my um, vibrational healer, Catherine Rose, to put together a group that is exclusive to the Minding Your Soul members. And so we get together once a month on the fourth Sunday of every month, and it's a different topic every month. So this month, it's on October 24th, and she's doing clearing energy stored in the myelin sheath and requesting repair. 
When I talk about healing, healing doesn't just take place on the physical level. It takes place on all levels. In order to heal yourself, you have to address all the levels. I can give you all the nutritional advice in the world, but if you are holding on to these programs, if you have a program running in your subconscious mind that healing is hard, healing is impossible, I am destined to be sick, these are things that you don't even know are run, running in the background of your mind. Now, Catherine <clears throat> doesn't like when I talk about her work because I always say that she's magical and she's got a magic wand and she just waves it around and she hates that. She's like, Janine, you can't be telling people that. So what we did was I did an interview with her so that she can answer all the questions that we all had in her words. And that's on my website, uh, mindingyoursoul.com. And then go to resources and you can read all about Catherine. And then if you want, <coughs> my throat's like, yeah, you're done talking. Sorry, one second. Anyway, if you're interested, oh, Janice, I like that. It's a triangle, mind, body, and soul. It really is. And that's why Catherine is a mandatory part of my Path to Healing program, my four-month coaching program, because I think... I don't think that I would have healed 100% if it wasn't for her. She was a very important component in my healing. So is the medical medium. So is everything that I did before then. All these pieces of the puzzle. <coughs> but I feel like she was so important that she had to be part of my program. So when you sign up for my program, you get the four months. You get um, one session each month for free. But for the Minding Your Soul members, it's only $53. You don't have to subscribe. Um, you can sign up once. It's 53 bucks, Or you can subscribe if you like it. But try it once. See if you like it. Especially if you're thinking about trying it, do it this month. It's October 24th. And the topic is clearing energy stored in the myelin sheath. That's all. I just wanted to tell you guys because I'm super excited about that one. I thought that was awesome. Um... I think I talked about ev any everything that I wanted to. Thank you so much for participating and talking to me. You know how much I love this. I absolutely love talking to you guys. It's so much better than, you know, the, the inter interaction I just really love. Any other questions, just put them in Minding Your Soul. I'm going to take a break from talking right now. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I do this every Wednesday, so I'll see you next Wednesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, or I'll see you in the group. All right, guys. Have a great night. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.